Mr. Got to Go and Arnie. Story by Louise Simmy and illustrations by Cynthia Nugent and read by Mr. C, the teacher. In an old hotel covered with vines, there lived a large gray cat called Got to Go. Across the street from the hotel was the ocean, well, some of it anyway, and a beach where people liked to swim in the summer and walk on the promenade all year round. People especially liked the Sylvia Hotel because of the beach. In the long, wet winters, Got to Go sat at a window and watched the foolish people walking their foolish dogs in the rain. Got to Go hated the rain, and the dogs didn't much care for it either, except for the silly ones that would chase a stick over and over and over. Every time their person threw the stick, they'd tear off after it as if it was something wonderful, like a nice piece of fish or one of Miss Pritchett's tuna sandwiches. Got to go sensibly stayed inside, where it was nice and warm, sleeping on the window sills and riding up and down in the service elevator. Every so often, Mr. Foster, the hotel manager, would look at him and say, My word, is that cat still here? As soon as it stops raining, that cat's got to go. But nobody paid any attention, least of all got to go, who had been there for seven years. Got to go liked summer best. Then the sun shone and children played in the water at the edge of the ocean, which sparkled under the sun with its frill of happy children. Lots of people walked and ran on the promenade or zoomed along with little round things on the bottoms of their shoes. And peculiar things with long tails swooped and fluttered in the air, while the popcorn man called out, Hot buttered popcorn! Come and get your popcorn. Then got to go like to sit on the windowsill outside and feel the sun on his thick gray fur. He stayed away from the beach because in summer there were even more dogs chasing sticks and barking their fool heads off. He went for leisurely strolls around the hotel or climbed the big tree to see what he could see. And life was good at the Sylvia Hotel. It was very good. Until one day. That day, he heard something that sounded like a dog bark inside the hotel, in Mr. Foster's office. Got to go on his lobby windowsill, kept looking out the window, but one ear pointed toward Mr. Foster's office. Then Mr. Foster came out carrying a creature too little to be a dog, but when it saw got to go, it barked. It was a dog. A very small dog. A very small, very noisy dog. Oh, said Miss Pritchett, the desk clerk, isn't he darling? Nice little pooch, said old Harry the bellhop, patting its little head with hair sticking up everywhere and hanging down over its beady little eyes. Mr. Foster carried it over to the window sill. Got to go. This is Arnie, he said. Arnie barked and barked. Got to go jumped down from the window sill, marched across the lobby and down the stairs, not waiting for a ride in the elevator. He went into the furnace room where it was dark and gloomy, and he stayed there three days. The cooks tried to coax him out with tempting scraps from the kitchen. Miss Pritchett came down and brought him a tuna sandwich. Old Harry brought leftovers from the room service trays. Come on, they all said, stroking his dusty head. It's not the same without you upstairs. But got to go who heard horrid little barking noises up there, just turned his head away and closed his eyes. Then Mr. Foster came down, kneeling on the dusty floor in his good hotel manager pants and peering at Got to Go. My word, he said, this won't do. The guests are asking for you. 
Where is got to go? They all say. We have to keep the guests happy, so come on, old boy, stop this nonsense and get upstairs where you belong. He stood up and swatted at his pants. Dust, dirt, cat hair. My word, doesn't anybody clean down here? He sneezed a huge sneeze and took out his snowy white handkerchief. And look at you, your coat's a mess. We can't have a hotel cat looking like that. When Mr. Foster left the furnace room, got to go, went with him. He was tired of it anyway. And so got to go gradually got used to Arnie. But life was not so good at the Sylvia Hotel. It was not nearly as good. For one thing, he hadn't brushed his whiskers for ages in Mr. Foster's bathroom, and he had always had his afternoon nap on the windowsill in Mr. Foster's office, where it was quiet, except for the rain on the window, sometimes, and the scratching of Mr. Foster's pen. But now Arnie was in Mr. Foster's office and got to go had to go downstairs for his afternoon nap, where there was no warm, wide windowsill, where there was no windowsill at all, not even a window, not even a sill, and no one making pen-scratching noises to put him to sleep. It seemed like Arnie never stopped barking, except when he slept or when Mr. Foster carried him around, which annoyed Got to Go a lot. Worst of all, wherever Got to Go went, Arnie ran circles around him, barking hysterically. Got to Go, who was much bigger than Arnie, just ignored him, making him bark louder and run in faster and faster circles. Then, one day, as Arnie dashed in front of him, got to go leapt up in the air and came down smack on top of Arnie, flattening him onto the carpet in mid-bark. You could hardly see any of Arnie sticking out. It was very quiet in the Sylvia Hotel lobby. Just as Mr. Foster was thinking he should rescue Arnie, got to go got up, stepped over Arnie, and carried on his way. Arnie, scared out of his wits, kept on barking and running in circles all by himself till Mr. Foster picked him up and put him in his bed, where his feet kept running as he slept. Arnie never chased got to go again, not even when got to go reclaimed his window sill in Mr. Foster's office for his afternoon naps, or jumped up on the sink to brush his whiskers against the toothbrush in Mr. Foster's bathroom. But Arnie still barked his irritating little bark at everything and everyone else, annoying the guests and worrying Mr. Foster. Arnie backed up with each bark like a little wind-up dog, sometimes tripping people who were not expecting a dog going the wrong way. One morning, Mr. Foster had to go up on top of the Sylvia Hotel to talk to a man fixing the roof. He took Arnie with him. Mr. Foster set Arnie down on the roof. Stay, he said. Arnie stayed. It was the only thing he had learned how to do till a seagull flew past and he tore after it, sailing right off the edge into the air and dropping out of sight. When Mr. Foster got down to the ground, Arnie was nowhere to be found. Arnie, he called, clutching his chest and looking everywhere. Arnie? Silence. Oh, my word, oh, my word, poor Arnie. He must be dead, but where is he? And he ran around in circles, calling Arnie. Have you seen a small dog? He asked some people walking past. No, said a man, but I saw a leafy branch with some little feet under it going down the sidewalk and up the hotel steps. In Mr. Foster's office, a quivering leafy branch covered Arnie's bed. In Mr. Foster's office, a quivering leafy branch covered Arnie's bed. Under it was Arnie. He had landed in the big tree. Mr. Foster drove Arnie to the dog doctor, who laughed and said, Well, super dog, did you forget your cape? Don't take any more animals up on eight-story buildings unless they have wings, he told Mr. Foster. That will be forty dollars, please. Mr. Foster drove Arnie home in the rain. He had a headache. He had a lot of headaches lately.
One fine day, old Harry, walking Arnie, stopped to watch the sailboats. A girl came rollerblading by, and Arnie took off, yanking the leash from old Harry and knocking the girl off the path and into the bushes, and knocking himself senseless, which was not hard to do. When old Harry told him what had happened, Mr. Foster got another headache. Another day, a man from the city works department removed a sewer cap behind the hotel to fix a problem. Arnie darted outside and started barking at the man, backing up with every bark, and disappeared down the sewer. There was a moment's silence and then the hollow, faraway sound of Arnie barking down there. The man laughed and climbed down the ladder into the sewer. He came up holding a wet and dirty Arnie at arm's length. I think he needs a bath, the man said. When Arnie was clean again, Mr. Foster sat for a long time with his head in his hands, thinking. And then he made a long-distance phone call. A very long-distance phone call. A week later, his friend Madame Latour from France arrived with a small dog that looked a lot like Arnie. Her name was Fifi, and she was very sweet. Her coat was a lovely shiny rust color, and Madame Latour brushed her every morning and tied her hair up out of her bright eyes with a ribbon. A different color every day. Arnie fell in love. He stopped barking and spent all his time sitting outside Madame Latour's door, or in the room playing with Fifi and taking French lessons. When Madame Latour said, Arrête, Arnie, Arnie stopped. When she said, Ne bougez pas, Arnie, Arnie stayed. And when she told him to stop barking, Arnie stopped barking. Arnie is not naughty, Madame Latour told Mr. Foster. He is just nervous here. Too many people. It is bad for Arnie. And indeed, it seemed as if it must be so. Sebo, Fifi, has fallen in love with Arnie. Madame Latour said, I do have fallen in love with this dear little dog. I would like to take him on a holiday. My word, what an interesting idea, said Mr. Foster, smiling behind his handkerchief. I think this might be good for Arnie. Madame Latour came with one dog. She left with two. And got to go smiled all over inside himself as he watched them leave. Mr. Foster began receiving photographs in the mail with Madame Latour's hand writing underneath. Finally, a letter came from Mr. Foster. It was from Madame Latour. Mon bon ami, I am writing to ask your kind permission to keep Arnie here with us. What can I say, mon ami? Fifi will be too sad without Arnie now. I think her little heart would break. Mine too. Can he stay, s'il vous plaît? Mr. Foster shut the door of his office and did a little dance. We, oui, he sang as he danced, we, 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 we. He sent a telegram. He threw away his headache pills and he skipped out into the lobby. He saw got to go on the windowsill, soaking up the sun. My word, he said, is that cat still here? As soon as it stops raining, that cat's got to go. And Mr. Foster buttoned his suit jacket and hurried off to manage the hotel. Got to go, the sun warm on his thick gray fur, closed his eyes and began to purr. Life at the Sylvia Hotel was good. It was very, very good.